Welcome back. Today I'm making a video on how to do something. I usually don't do how to's, but every once in a while I do. And the reason I'm making this video is because there isn't one on YouTube currently. Um, the other day I pulled my evaporator box out of the cutlass because we're going to delete the AC. I, uh, I already had the motor in the car with this evaporator box in my way, and I couldn't even get to the number eight or number six spark plug wires. I had to use needle nose to get them on and off the plugs. So now that the motor's out of the car, why not get this thing out of the way and delete it? So what I had to do was there's going to be 11 bolts total that hold this thing into the car. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right there. That holds the uh, blower motor in there place. So what we did was we went with one of these kits. It's not even a kit, it's just a block off plate. It's made out of, uh, feels like plastic. Probably an ABS plastic. So I can't review this obviously because I haven't put it on the car yet, but let's count the bolts here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is gonna be held in the car by six bolts. I guess we're gonna have some spare parts left over. Looks like five bolts to hold the blower motor in. Um, let's see. There's the back side of the evaporator. That thing's huge. And the blower motor's crusty, but it still works really good. So I don't think I'm gonna bother changing it. Never had any issues with it, and it gets plenty of exercise when the car's on the road. Come up here that's what it's gonna look like you can see the evaporator box actually came all the way up to here where there's a sealant they used and that new box looks like it's gonna be flat from here to here across so I'm probably gonna have to take a paint scraper or something and get this off maybe do some touch-up with paint work so I can kind of like hide it a little bit and obviously you're gonna have to glue the new box on with some kind of sealant like they did from the factory I didn't want to, but I had to. I had to pull the wheel well out on the passenger side because I really should get some light in here. Hang on. There we go. You can see the wheel well would block off right in this area. So you couldn't even, I couldn't get to these bolts around the blower motor. And if the blower motor decides to go bad at any point in time, I'm gonna have to pull the wheel well back out to get to it. And just in case anybody's curious, this uh, product, this ABS plastic, seems all right. I won't know until I go to put it on, but this was uh, it's about $130. It was like $127 and some change before tax. So after tax, it's going to be about $130. Um, I got it through Summit, so since it was over $100, I got free shipping anyway. And that'll wrap up that part of the video on how to get a, an evaporator out of an A-body, the 68 to 72. I uh, also picked up a set of mufflers while I was there, add that to the free shipping. Uh, I originally bought a set of Cherry Bomb Vortex mufflers, and they were offset inlet, offset outlet. And I didn't even stop and think that I was going to have issues when I ordered the mufflers. I don't know why, but I've got ladder bars on the back of this cutlass. And I really don't want to run into issues like I did with the thrust chambered mufflers I originally put on this car. I had issues with them where I couldn't fit them with the ladder bars. I made them fit and it was kind of just a disaster. So I decided to go with these. I guess Flowmaster, I don't really care for that name, Flowmaster, because they're notoriously known for chambered mufflers, which I cannot stand the sound of unless they're on like a Mustang or something. I don't like them on older engines with you know, the old school firing order with decent compression. So anyway, they come out with these canister style mufflers called a Flow FX. They make them in a, a full body casing also. It's basically a Dynamax Ultra Flow, but cheaper. Um, it doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel, they're pretty heavy. They got some weight to them and uh, the welds look pretty good on them. But they're about half, uh, Dynamax wants, I think, $75 a side, and these cost, they're like $47 a piece before tax, so you're looking at like $50 a muffler if you go with these. 
<clears throat> I got a set of Dynamax full body casing Ultra Flows on Dad's wagon, and they're seventy-five dollars. Um, that round canister Ultra Flow, they also make in a full body case just like this. I don't know how well you can see that, but it looks like a normal muffler. So they make two stops. You get the full body case or you can get them round. I chose the round because like I said, I got those ladder bars on there and I do not want any fitment issues and I'd like to have a good amount of clearance between the bars and the exhaust system. So from what I've been hearing, I've watched a shitload of uh, YouTube videos with cars on these and they sound really mellow on modern engines. Like people put them on Dodge Rams, Suburbans and pickup trucks and they sound really mellow and boring. But I watched a video where a guy put them on a 70 Torino with a 351 and uh, no H pipe, no X pipe, and they sounded really good. So I think I'm going to be happy with them. But once I get the motor back in this car, I'll probably do a video exclusively to those mufflers and do a full drive around of how they sound inside, outside, and upside down. So I got other videos lined up coming. I just haven't had a chance to put them together yet so you stick around they'll be out and uh i think that's gonna be the end of this episode so i'll see you guys later take it easy so i lied it's not the end of the episode i got a little bit more to add to it uh that evaporator box delete kit i got it semi-installed in the car really i mocked it up and uh, this is what it looks like and this is what you're going to go through if you buy one of these it looks pretty good. It fits in there great. This is what you're gonna be up against. This is where your blower motor goes. Like I said, it's just mocked up. Now, this bolted in pretty good. You can see the stud slips through right there. You put a nut on there. It was this one here in particular. I had to cut part of the box out, you can see. I used a, a pair of snips um, that wasn't cut out at all for that stud so rather than try and figure out where the hole goes hang on rather than try and figure out where to drill a hole and all that I just took snips and I cut it and I broke the plastic out of the way because nobody's gonna see that one of the motors in the car it's hidden way down there you can't even see it right now but everything else, for the most part, lined up pretty good. There's a nut that goes there, a nut that goes there. It's a pretty decent fit. Now, I think the reason I had to cut that out is because this box is listed for cars 68 to 72. And you know how General Motors is they they change things year to year to year so they have to make a universal kit i'm willing to bet that you know the early 68 cars maybe 69 doesn't or they have a stud there but maybe the later cars like 70 71 72 don't have a stud there so they wouldn't punch that out but i'm happy with it i just i have to uh there's no place cut in this thing particularly, like I said. I think it's a 68 to 71, so many changes are made. There's no cutout in it for your blower motor resistor that's right here on your evaporator box. So I'm gonna have to find a nice hole or a nice spot to cut a hole in that box to put that uh, resistor in. Uh, I think the whole idea is that air can pass through and keep the back side of the resistor cool. I was thinking about putting it somewhere external, but like I said, I think it needs to be in the box so it can stay cool. So after I get the blower motor wired up and put in place and I get a hole cut out and I put that resistor in there, it should work out nicely. One step at a time. So that is gonna wrap this episode up. Um, my Camaro, it caught on fire while I was driving it the other day. 
I had a nice little fire under the dash while I was driving. I had to bail out of the car real quick. Pulled over off to the side of the road. Almost got detoured getting out of the car. Looking around, what can I grab? Grab my CDs, grab this, grab that, get the hell out of the car. Um, yeah, so look forward to that episode. The car did not burn up, by the way. But a big black smoke cloud came out from under the dash. Uh, it's a pretty good scare. I was... I basically looked at it like, all right, grab my shit, get out, wave goodbye to the car, and be like, so long, buddy, nice knowing you. But, no, the Camaro did not catch on fire completely. Uh, it's not burn up. It's sitting in my driveway in one piece, but stuff did catch on fire under the dashboard. Uh, you gotta love hillbilly wiring. It's not my hillbilly wiring, but previous owners, you know, the past 25 owners of the car that made their own wiring harnesses out of speaker wire, no fuses, and other garbage. So look forward to that video. That's coming up next. Um, I gotta fix the wiring under the dash of the Camaro. I gotta do a steering box on it. Um, I got steering issues with the Mustang where I gotta change the steering shaft. I don't think I'm gonna make a video on the Mustang because that's just, you know, it's the daily. That car doesn't attract YouTube attention. It's not meant to. It's just how I get around in shitty weather. So, look forward to the Camaro video with why it caught on fire. Some um, steering and uh, suspension component stuff on the Camaro. And some Cutlass videos. I should, I should be getting my motor back from the machine shop soon. And as soon as that comes back, that thing's going together. We're going to make the four speed to it. And we're going to slide it on in. So that's what we got planned next, and I will see you guys later. Take it easy, have a good time, and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Later.